Hello everyone. Welcome to Raptor Talk Newsmaker. I am Pia Renata. Our guest today is Trade Secretary Ramon Lopez. We're going to talk about the alert level system currently being piloted in Metro Manila and how this will affect businesses, especially as we enter the holiday season. Thank you, Sekmon, for joining us. Thank you, Pia. Hello to everyone. All right. So, Sekmon, uh, as I mentioned, no, the alert level system is currently in place. Uh, hanggang September 30, tayo nandito sa alert level 4 sa Metro Manila. And uh, we've seen kind of a peek into what this alert level system is all about. Um, like just listening to uh, feedback from citizens, from business owners, parang yung common sentiment na nagiginig natin is uh, while the, the, the percentages currently allowed for businesses are quite small, not enough maybe to recoup the losses of the past 18 months under the pandemic, they're saying that it's better than nothing, that um, at least it's a start. Uh, pero yung worry ng mga tao ngayon is how, how predictable will this alert level system be? They're scared that they will be under lockdown again, maybe in a week's time or two months' time. Diba napaka-daming uncertainties. And I think that's what's really plaguing a lot of these business owners in terms of those anxiety. So, um, Secretary, coming from the economic managers in the task force, uh, can you can we still can we assuage them right now or can we assert in them a certain level of predictability in these alert level systems? Do you think that, for example, going back to MECQ or ECQ is something that could happen um, sooner than later? Well, going back to that system, baka hindi naman, ano? Uh, kaya tayo nag-shift na into a granular system, essentially for very small pockets, so that to allow the rest of the economy, the other parts outside the granular lockdown, open. No? So, y- yun yung may certainty. And also, the certainty on adopting, hopefully, this alert level system, uh, from alert level one to five with granular lockdown no? at, at any alert level. So this would be the system that's piloted niya in NCR. Uh, para ito na yung talagang may, may certainty tayo rito. Ngayon, as to, as to like having, uh, go, going back to the ECQ level, because alert level five is like ECQ, it really depends on the cases. Ganun naman talaga ang situation natin dito sa covid uh, that, that's the reason why we always remind ating mga kababayan, lahat tayo, no? na yung to, to really follow yung minimum public health protocol kasi that's the one that will bring down the cases. Eh. And, and, and as long as we are able to manage that and hopefully bring down further yung cases and the reproduction rate, lower the healthcare utilization rate, uh, lower the attack rate, have a negative growth, etc. Ito yung mag-bring down to level 3 that will provide more openings of business. So following this system, uh, there we expect that there will be more, hopefully more opening uh, uh, in, the, in the months to come, up, hopefully beyond, up to Christmas and beyond Christmas. Okay. Pero siguro, Sek, what we can also spot is uh, some people find a discrepancy. Because like a few days ago, we, we just experienced the second highest uh, case log again. And so people are wondering, we're shifting to this alert level system for Metro Manila, and yet our cases don't seem to show any sign of abating. Um, how do we explain this to the public? And maybe does vaccination rates, for example, come into play here? How can we assume, how can we assure citizens that uh, kahit bumababa ng alert level or we're piloting the system, it doesn't mean that we're exposing them to danger by um, lowering these, these measures? Yeah, if you notice, alert level four, is still a relatively high level of uh, of uh, containment uh, because precisely of the high, still high number of COVID cases. But we see a bit of improvement from time to time. The it goes below twenty per twenty thousand per day, um, and 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 with that we we're, we're hoping that it will continue to go lower and lower. Kaya talit tayo, very careful na. Kaya naka-alert level 4 pa si, si Metro Manila. We did not, or at least the, the DOH, together with the Metro Manila mayors, that did not make it alert level 3. Uh, kasi nga, mataas pa nga yung cases. So, give, given that, it's a careful assessment and also a careful reopening. Kaya nga dito sa alert level 4, di ba mapansin nyo, ano pa rin, uh, very limited yung naging opening dito sa mga... Uh, uh, businesses na considered uh, businesses of concern like like the dine-in and the personal care services 
uh, ginawa lang 10% indoor, 30% outdoor. So, talagang maingat na maingat dito sa pag, pagbukas na to. And in fact the, fa- the fact that may delta na sinabi highly transmissible, kaya yung indoor, nilimit lang muna sa sa 10% na vaccinated pa yung customer. Uh, and lahat tayo, alam natin in the business, hindi enough yung 10% of yung what it used to be uh, or, or, or 10% of capacity. Hindi talaga enough yan, but it's better than zero. So yun lang yung naging ano natin, uh, kesa hindi siya allowed totally. At least there is a, it's being piloted right now na 10% capacity. And if there is no, there's no outbreak, and uh, we expect naman no, uh, na wala talagang magiging outbreak dito, very careful 10%, then uh, we, we will have to study kung kakayanin ito ng 20% na, na indoor. Again, only for that, uh, that sector na vaccinated. Uh, take note na dito lang ginagamit yung, yung distinction ng vaccinated in a level 4 at saka dito sa dine-in and personal care services. Because in the outdoor, indoor yun, ano? in the outdoor, wala nang distinction ng ang, uh, vaccinated and at, at unvaccinated. Ganun din sa lower level, low, alert level 3, alert level 2, and 1. So, mm-hmm. so talagang dito lang talaga pinag-ingatan na we agreed na sige, gawin, i-open up, i-try natin and to be careful to the co- to para safe tayo sa customer, yun lang, gawin lang dito sa vaccinated. So it becomes as an incentive. Second, are you saying that it's possible for the capacities allowed in restaurants or mga establishments in Alert Level 4 to be expanded further even within Alert Level 4? Like for example, for gyms, currently not allowed in Alert Level 4, can we expect changes in this kahit even if we stay in this Alert Level? Oh, oh uh, it's being studied right now. Kasi, uh, so ang parang, to your question niya pala kanina, Pia, so at least in, in trying to set protocols at each Alert Level, may expectation na na may certainty ano yung bukas at certain alert levels. So ito yung ini-establish ngayon na protocol na sa alert level 4, ano pa yung mga safe natin buksan. Sa ngayon, inumpisahan natin dito nga sa dining and personal care, bakit sila yung nauna? Kasi sila yung labor intensive, sila yung malaking affected na workers, 1.2 million in NCR just for these two sectors. Kaya inuna sila. Ngayon may petition ngayon yung yung gym, on the basis na sila ang gym is an exercise, makaka-build daw ng immunity. And totoo naman, kaya nga inalaw natin yung outdoor exercise, even in alert level 4, uh, because of yung malaking nagagawa niya sa antibodies pag-increase ng immunity. Kaya kinonsider din, kinoconsider ngayon yung itong exercise in, in the gym uh, dahil uh, uh, ito ngayon yung sinasabi nila na pang, pang palakas ng immunity rin against COVID. At, at syempre, dahil indoor siya, meron na lang mga, mga extra protocol, safety protocol tayo na papa, i- i-impose dito kung sakali mang ito ay ma-consider. So, for example, yung mga adding purifiers per, per, per uh, participant or member or kaya ay uh, yung mga UV, UV equipment uh, para talagang mawala yung risk uh, dito sa, sa exercise activity na to. So pretty soon, sec, uh, you're seeing in a study the uh, possibility of vaccinated people at least being able to allow to go to the gyms. At alert level four, at indoor. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, Secretary, we also have this uh, granular lockdown system. And uh, curious lang kami what happens uh, when a commercial area goes under granular lockdown. Siyempre, yung mga businesses doon will also have to stay closed for two weeks. Will there be aid for them? Um... So pagkaalam ko dito sa granular lockdown, karamihan sa mga residential. At uh, kung kailangan yun sa, sa commercial or for example, a factory, uh, ang pagkaalam ko dito ay, kasi baligtad eh, pag sa opisina, ikaw yung pupuntahan, ikaw yung papasok. No? Mm-hmm. Unlike in residential, sa iyo umuwi. So pwede mong i-lockdown talaga yon In a factory, pag lockdown mo, ibig sabihin, uh, walang makakapasok. Ang kailangan kasi dapat i-contain yung lugar. Eh, walang tao doon pag naka-lockdown. So, baliktad. Diba? So, uh, it's really more residential yung applicable yung lockdown. Uh, kaya if you look at the guidelines, it's on the residential. Ang SOP natin doon sa mga factory is dinidisinfect siya. Maybe it can be closed for one day for disinfection para safe sa workers. So, so kung magkaroon man ng uh, kung magkaroon man ng uh, transmission doon, 
uh, Malawak unless uh, I don't know we'll, we'll have to discuss with the uh, LGU ito sa nag implement paano kung merong isang factory dun sa lugar na yon no so depende sa sa implementation mall or uh, grocery store paano po ba yun yeah actually hindi sila parang hindi ko ma-imagine kasi na lockdown yun eh kasi mm-hmm. walang nakatira dun eh di ba if at all lilinisin siya i-disinfect siya okay ang ang, uh, ang lockdown applies to the uh, to the individual usually na may covid nandun sa bahay nila eh. Uh, Secretary, may po ba kayong tally of how many businesses have permanently closed since the pandemic? Oh, uh, uh, ongoing yung study. Para meron ako nakuha nga recently, uh, close to 20% yung huli kong basa dito sa NCR. Uh, the last time was, uh, I mentioned, during an ECQ, was mm-hmm. the highest was 16%. No? Tapos uh, tayo ay nag-MECQ, bumaba sa 10%. Pero meron kami ongoing survey. Uh, pre- very pre- preliminary pa ito but uh, yun nga ang nakikita namin hindi pa tapos kasi yung survey pero may running uh, percentage na may mga 20% uh, kasi nga dito sa nangyari recently uh, marami din talagang uh, close na na close na establishment because the M- in, remember the MECQ is like an ECQ in the recent one ano kasi maraming close talaga like this dining and uh, Um, uh, personal care. Sarado siya in the past para bago nag-alert level 4. Pero sir, yung 20% is closed during that time. You're not saying they're closed permanently. Ah, yes. We're not. We're not. Oo. oo. It's, just, it's just that pag matagal na silang closed, ang expectation natin, ma- naglilipat din sila ng business kasi hindi, imagine mo, hindi naman sila pwedeng walang hanap buhay or livelihood. So, nagmagahanap yan ng ibang negosyo. So, yung iba dyan, posibleng nag-shift na. Uh, take note, yung, yung aming re- uh, sa listahan ng mga nag-register naman na bago, mas marami. Uh, uh, for example, yung record nga natin, even from 2019 to 2020, uh, lumaki yung, yung ating uh, bis- <coughs> businesses registered from uh, 1.5 to 1.7. And then, Noong 2021, recently, yung 1.7 at yung 1.9 million. Uh, take note na in in this recent, ano yan, uh, late, latest number. And in fact, yung 1.9 million as of, the, I think, last week, may running total siya na 2 million. Ibig sabihin, marami pang nagre-register din na businesses. <coughs> and, and we presume, ito na yung businesses na na nag-thrive under a pandemic. Yung may mga lockdown. So, presumably, ito na yung mga ano na to. Uh, uh, those related to e-commerce, to logistics, delivery takeout kind of model. Okay. Uh, and Secretary, we also know na marami namang loan programs actually in government for MSMEs. Mm-hmm. But a lot of business owners naman uh, would rather not apply for the loans or are hesitant to apply for the loans because of the uncertainties ahead. Because at the end of the day, they're still going to be um, diba, parang spending money on this. So, uh, yeah. is the government considering other forms of aid for small businesses at this point? Oh, so very, very evident yan in the in the tourism. Kaya sabi natin, konti lang yung humiram di. So far, konti yung humiram sa tourism. Meron, mer- meron naman pero konte. So, nakikita namin yung support talaga na very useful, lalo na pag pinag-usapan yung mga micro and livelihood level. Yung, yung grant na binibigay, it's not pautang, but it's uh, yung, yung uh, grant na mga, pan, mga gamit ito, paninda, gamit sa, sa iyong malit na negosyo, na, na may pwedeng, pwedeng cart, pwedeng uh, mga paninda sa palengke, or kaya yung mga tools of the trade, ika nga, no? yung uh, mga gamit, lutuan, let's say if you're a karinderia or a mini restaurant. So, yan yung grant na amounting to about 5,000 to 8,000 lang per, per individual. Mm, okay. And sec, when we talk of alert level, kasi pinapilot ngayon to sa Metro Manila for uh, until September 30, if this works, which areas outside Metro Manila will be placed under the similar system? Um, is it nationwide right away or only a few cities? Maybe those with higher vaccination rates? Ano po ba yung pinag-usapan na ng task force? Uh, so far, walang pinag-uusapan na magpa-prioritize. I think pagka maganda ang resulta at uh, implementable itong, itong alert level system with granular lockdown, 
ang so far ang pinag-uusapan ay roll out outside Metro Manila of course with the approval of the president muna bago i-roll out outside Metro Manila so ibig sabihin uh, walang unahing mga cities outside Metro Manila ang intindi ko dito roll out as in i-implement na sa ibang dako ng ating bansa dahil uh, ito rin yung naririnig or madalas din tinatanong ng ating mga uh, League of uh, Mayors and Governors at uh, uh, kung parang tinatanong na kailan ma-implement din sa kanila because I think gusto rin nila ganitong sistema. Oh, kasi yung Metro Manila naman, it's it's because we have a relatively high vaccination rate. I mean, compared to the rest of the country, right? We're more than 50% already. So, um, yes. but that's not something we see in other cities or other parts of the country. So, how then would you justify, you know, like making this nationwide? Uh, but to justify naman siya, yung system kasi nung, yung, if you, uh, if you will remember or maybe take note na ngayon naman ini-implement na itong granular uh, granular lockdown system kung saan talaga let's say may nakita na uh, malakas na transmission di ba so ini-implement na rin yan but i think it will simplify yung pag-leveling uh, mabilis na yung 1 2 3 4 na madali ma-identify kung ano mas malakas at medyo in-adjust din yung parameters na ano yung magpapasok sa level 4 and yung papasok sa level 3. Uh, but at the same time, yung pagka-granular lockdown implementation, it's being done na rin. So, hindi rin ito bago para sa ibang sa ibang lugar, regardless of the vaccine, vaccination rate. Mm, okay. Uh, isa pang unique feature ng alert level system is from alert levels 3 to 1, wala nang mobility restrictions for any age. And um, I think this has maybe... Uh, maybe made some people happy, some people scared. I mean, Chamber mixed reactions yan. But siguro, uh, can we just re understand the, the rationale for this? Why lift all these mobility restrictions under those alert levels? Itong alert level is really a way to, ito yung parang way forward natin into recognizing the balance, recognizing that the virus is here to stay. So it, it basically allows a, a, a bigger reopening, actually, if you look into it. Now, you level three, level two, level one. Why? Uh, diba, sa, let's, let's say it's a level three. Uh, yung indoor, 30%. Yung outdoor, 100%. Dati, pati yung outdoor, may 50% pa tayo. Pero ngayon, yung outdoor, maging 100%. So, tapos, pagka level, level two, yung mas mababa na level, mas malaking opening sa indoor, 50%. At yung outdoor, 100%. Then, Parang mas marami siyang opening. And the sectors that are allowed, if you look into the list, parang halos yung lahat ng services sector natin, lalo na sa level 2 and 1, mas marami na ring opening. Even, uh, hindi lang yung restaurant, even yung mga karaoke, ganyan, allowed na siya sa level 2. Eh dati yan, parang nasa negative list pa natin. So, nireview nang nireview yan kasi ng mga health expert together with the technical working group and they wanted to really just simplify and open up uh, a lot more. Yung mga amusement, entertainment, mabubukas na siya sa level 2, level 1. Uh, so parang... Why given that you cannot be vaccinated yet? Kasi yung concern ng iba, uh, okay saan if we've reached herd immunity or uh, we have very high vaccination rates or or if kids are already vaccinated. But uh, siguro maybe just maybe explain lang why suddenly we, we lift these restrictions for children. What guarantees do we have that this uh, lifting will still protect lives? Ah, no. So, yung sa children, yung sa children, wala akong, at, well, ang alam ko, hindi, pa, hindi naman binago pa yung nandun, yung sa children. I'm talking about the sectors that are to be open, na mas maraming opening na pagka levels 2, level 1. Uh, pero and yung... Uh, me, Secretary Roque, alert levels 3 to 1, Wala na rin, wala na mobility restrictions. It's subject to LGU approval. Um, but basically, if if it's less than alert level 4, hindi na yung parang 18 to 65 year olds have to stay home. It's not anymore like that. Mm. Okay, so hindi ko lang masagot yung younger. Hindi ko na, hindi ko na ano pa yun. But yung alam ko, yung older, older than 65, open na siya. It will be open. Mm -hmm. Actually, di ba ngayon naman, Basta upper ka at uh, vaccinated, okay din yung over 65. Uh, at saka mm -hmm. pag upper, no? So, may, may mas may mobility. Yung sa younger, ano, hindi ko pa na monitor yan. Kung ano yung, ano doon, yung, yung rule doon. So, balikan, balikan na lang kita doon. 
And then si Secretary Dominguez, na may isang Senate hearing, I think, congressional hearing, where he said something interesting. He said that the economic managers seem to be a lone voice in the task force uh, saying that we should reconsider or not resort as often to lockdowns. And this has resulted nga in this alert level system party, siguro. But siguro, what we're interested to know, what are the requests of the private sector that economic managers find hard to lobby in the IATF, IATF meetings? And can you tell us a bit more about those dynamics? Well, the dynamics is really uh, the concern like on things like this uh, dine-in, for example, where you remove the mask. Mm -hmm. um, although we're, we, we've been saying uh, in, in mga IATF meetings, uh, wala namang established na, na, na proof pa dito na nagiging cause for super spreader, especially if you talk to the, the sort of the formal uh, dine-in sector, na they really follow yung mga protocols, the distancing, the alternate seating, yung mga barriers. So, uh, wala namang nas nasasabi na naging cause sila ng, ng transmission. But, the fact that the masks are being removed, dun yung marami, malaking concern ng uh, mga iba sa health experts. So, nagkaroon ng mar mahabang diskusyon dun. E yan yung dynamics talaga dyan. Until we reach that point na in the alert level 4 na uh, mapayagan lang ito kahit 10%, sige na, basta ba vaccinated. And we argue that really a very important uh, sector in the sense na over 1, 1 million just in Metro Manila alone. Nationwide, over 2 billion ang, ang employed dito. So maraming jobs uh, affected in, in that uh, sector and the stakeholders and the farmers that supply these sectors. So uh, kaya naging, nagkaroon talaga siya ng uh, due consideration. So yun yung dynamics dyan. Talagang matagal pinag-usapan niya. Ilang meetings na parating ni pinapasok natin sa agenda yan para mapag-usapan at makonsider and a lot of, uh, of course, yung kinuha na rin yung health expert, kaya nagkaroon na ng parang middle ground, which is, sige, let's allow vaccinated just for this purpose na indoor, uh, mm -hmm. for this under level four. What other perks are being discussed now for vaccinated people? Kasi, like, for example, si, um, si Presidential Advisor on Entrepreneurship, Joey Concepcion, was saying something about buses for vaccinated and unvaccinated. Aside from this, may iba pa bang iniisip na benefits or maybe new rules that will cover the vaccinated people? Yeah. Uh, well, right now, it's really more private sector-led, like uh, yung what they call bakuna benefits, yung more of incentives, mga perks, discounts, freebies, mm -hmm. pag-vaccinated. But uh, unfortunately, uh, we cannot do the, the so-called bubble wherein in, in, it, in public transport, uh, you mo yung vaccinated sa unvaccinated, or allow certain bus for vaccinated and vaccinated. Mm -hmm. This is uh, the aspect that is found still discriminatory at this point. Uh, kaya hindi namin pinupush ito dahil nga dun sa mga issues na yan. Especially at a, at a, at a point where the there are still uh, citizens na gusto magpabakuna na hindi pa nabakunahan. So kasi mm -hmm. eh, tayong balikan yan eh. Uh, ba't nyo kami pabawalan eh? Gusto namin pabakuna eh, hindi pa kami mabakunahan. Now, ngayon, ibang istorya, pagka, when, that's the reason why before sinabi ko, when the supply exceeds demand, ibig sabihin, mas maraming supply na ng vaccine na lahat ng gusto magpabakuna, nabakunahan na. No? At yung hindi na lang, yung ayaw na lang ang hindi nababakunahan, then maybe that's the time we can do those things, na certain restrictions. But right now, I don't think we can implement it. Uh, mm -hmm. Kaya, that's the reason why, even in this uh, alert level system, if you notice, I think nabanggit ko kanina, pag ibang le alert level na 2, 3, 2, 1, walang distinction. Pati sa outdoor ng level 4, walang distinction ng vaccinated and vaccinated. Kaya lang siya pinagbigyan sa indoor ng level 4. Kasi in the first place, bawal eh. So it becomes now an incentive. O sige, payagan natin pag vaccinated. Why? Because it's safer for them. Dun lang, dun mo lang pwede i-apply. Kasi originally bawal. But if you cannot do this kind of this, having a distinction, pagka in areas na pwede sila ngayon. Tapos sasabi mo, hindi na sila pwede. So, mm -hmm. example, public transport, pwede ngayon. Entering a mall, pwede ngayon, kahit sino. Tapos biglang sasabi mo, oh, hindi pwede yung unvaccinated. Yeah, mas malaking issue yan. So, hindi natin pwedeng gawin yan as a rule. Pagka, in er especially in areas, sectors, or levels na allowed naman ngayon pareho. Tapos biglang sabihin mo, hindi pwede. So, yun yung hindi pwedeng uh, ma-implement. Mm. So, economic managers are one in that position, mm -hmm. sir? Yeah, yeah. 
And also, kinusol din natin siyempre yung DOJ, no, na pagdating doon may concern. Pero itong proposal natin na i-allow lang as an incentive dito sa indoor sa level 4, which would have been closed, uh, doon okay sa may blessing ng DOJ. Na, ayan, pwede yan kasi more of incentive yan. So tal- talagang marami tayong inano na para kinausap dito at kin- kinlaro na safe itong buksan uh, health health wise pati legally no mm-hmm. How important secretary are discussions now about booster shots kasi sinasabi ng mga tao like for example the Sinovac shots given in March are about to expire so the protection is waning is some our economic managers pushing for booster shots to be given faster or sooner um, we, we have not discussed that, frankly, is, or no proposals from the economic sector. Well, because we recognize that we still have yet to to, to vaccinate a lot of our countrymen. Uh, kailangan mapataas muna yung vaccinate yung over 70% uh, ng ating nationwide, no? Hindi lamang NCR. Uh, maybe that's the time we, I mean, prior to that, we prepare na for a booster shot consideration. Mm, okay. And Secretary, moving on to our last few questions, because ito namang topic na, the second topic is more about the PPE supply. And this has been actually talked about a lot the past few weeks, lalo na sa mga Senate hearings on the pandemic contracts. So um, I remember, and we've covered this also, that in early 2020, DPI called on factories to repurpose and so that they can make PPEs that were sorely needed during those times. And uh, right, a lot right. of these local manufacturers, they, were, they answered your challenge, they spent a lot of money, they hired right. work repurposed. And sir, um, yung luma- lumalabas nga sa mga hearings na to is uh, they're actually losing out on that. They had to retrench like thousands of workers um, and they, they feel really bad about uh, what happened actually. So as Secretary of Trade who, who issued that call, what do you have to say to those uh, local suppliers now? Yeah, uh, we've been talking to them and in fact, they kami nga yung encourage na mag mag uh, produce sila dahil yung sa bansa natin wala tayong mga local producers yan. We were all importing and unfortunately during the first um, months ng pandemic lalo na nung lockdown, talagang walang supply. Meron tayo dito isang exporter from Bataan, but they were exporting their uh, their, their 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 production and ginawa lang natin, nakipag-usap tayo sa kanila para makapag-reallocate locally. At mabait naman yung chairman ng kumpanya na yon nag-donate pa siya sa atin, sa sa Pilipinas, and we distributed it to DOH, at uh, sa mga health workers, at uh, uh, ang alam ko, may mga, ang DOH bumili rin sa kanila para lang ma-distribute sa health workers. So, kasi talagang even imported, wala tayong mabili, kahit uh, gusto natin bumili dahil nga sa ibang bansa kailangan din nila kulang din sila may shortage din so hindi tayo mabebentahan so in encourage natin ngayon locally na mag-create ng ganung industriya at meron namang uh, uh, many heeded the calls natin yung call natin na magkaroon ng low domestic production uh, so nung nagproduce sila i think naging ready sila bandang June so prior to June at uh, yung mga napapag-usapan niya sa Senate, talagang mataas pa yung presyo. Uh, nung mga, I think, naging ready karamihan, mga end of May or or starting June, but still the capacity is not enough. So, gano'n naman. In-encourage namin sila. Siyempre, may production na kayo, o sumali na kayo dun sa mga requirements ng government. So, yun naman yung up, up to that point, hanggang dun lang kami maka, maka, maka-recommend. Of course, they have to do their thing. Uh, nag-submit sila ng, ng, uh, ng, sa mga bidding. So, yun na. I think may, mayroong mga nakakuha naman ng may mga nanalo. Pero meron ding mga hindi na nanalo. No? So, yun na nga. Nakita natin. Kasi nga, I think yung amount required at certain dates, yung mga ganong requirement. So, sabi ko nga, I had a proposal before. Sana nga magkaroon ng, uh, uh, ng batas na uh, hindi pag kami government project na ganyan sana mas tangkilikin yung government project bago mag uh, inter, bago bumili uh, internationally or bago mag import tangkilikin muna yung local kasi ngayon wala tayong laban as in pag mag, magbibit sila pero kung mas ang laki mura kasi talaga pag imported because of the economies of scale at matagal nang ginagawa tulad nung May time na, di ba, sa China, malaking problema din yan, kulang ang supply, kaya nga mataas yung, 
mataas yung presyuhan, even imported, kahit bumili ka internationally. Pero nung, nung nagkakaroon na ng uh, pagbaba ng cases sa China, nagkaroon na ng excess supply doon, ng inventory. Pero sa, yung sinasabi kasi ng senator sa hearing, for example, was it was a betrayal of these local firms because in fact, they were selling, they were ready to sell at half the price that the Chinese supplier, Farmali, was giving the government. So they were thinking this just flies in the face of logic and it's also uh, very bad uh, very bad optics, especially because the DPI, the government, was the one who asked these these firms to move heaven and earth just to repurpose their factory. So do you think an, an apology is in order? Because you know these, these businesses spent so much money, they had to fire so many workers, all because they believed that the government would live up to their promise. I mean, what do we do about the state of affairs and don't you think I mean, they should, uh, they deserve an apology at this point? Hindi naman, uh, hindi ko alam kung ba't kami mag-apologize kasi nang-carriage lang natin sila mag-produce para may local production tayo. Uh, but alam din naman nila na to participate in government, uh, I mean, to to be able to sell to government, they have to participate in the bidding hmm, procedure. But they, they won, yes, yeah, sir. They won, but it's like, they're, they're saying kasi EMS to, I'm specifically talking about I think after about some, no, after some time, yung, yung, um, yung orders na, na they were being that they were being accepted by the government, and they were they felt bad because they spent on it, and yet the the original order hindi hindi binalin ng government. So paano yun sir? Paano yung ganun? Hindi, ang alam ko story nun, I think yung for example yung sa EMS parang naging ready sila to produce towards June at hmm. Uh, hmm. hindi pa rin sila ready as to the quantity kaya nag-request pa sila, pero at least nanalo na sila, nag-request sila ng delivery after June, parang in tranche. June, July, August, September. Kasi hindi rin ready yung supply nila na, eh, na mas malaking supply around June. So, may timing issue. I think yung, yung sinasabi na purchase price yata nila was around June onwards. Pero yung, yung nabili ng government early on nga, wala nang mag-supply kahit internationally, kaya yung presyo nun was close to 28 pesos if I remember right. Pero, oh, yun na nga. So, I think yun naman yung pinag-uusapan na. Mas alam ng PSDBM yung mga nangyari dyan. So, hmm. oh, oh, okay. anyway, kita, like, nagsahit sumali yung hmm. sumali like, yung mga local hmm. naman. Oh. Ah, sige sir, pero, continue. Pero, oh, sumali yung mga local. Pero, alam ko, ready sila nung around June onward. Pero yung before June, hindi pa ready yung mga yung supply. That's what I can remember. Uh-huh. Okay. So, may say po ba yung DTI dun sa PSDPM in terms of how much they should be ordering, buying from different suppliers? Wala. Uh-huh. Yung inventory. I'm just trying to figure out kung walang say kayo na. Wala. Dapat ito lang. Wala. Okay. Wala. Ano na yun? Parang kami naman, we only can endorse eh. Di ba? Na parang, o oh, ito, mga local manufacturer na na tinumbinsi ng DTIBOI parang mag- we can just endorse them uh, but, pero yeah, hindi rin naman endorse. not for yeah. us also to push for them no baka sabihin ah. naglalabi kami for these companies di ba so parang this is la- like a program na ini-encourage na natin para mag magbid sila doon pero mm-hmm. si DTI is not participated na after dun sa ini-encourage natin yung mga private companies Parang yung private companies, they know naman as, as negosyante sila, magbibid sila para makabenta sa government. Mm-hmm. Yun nga. Kaya nga, sabi ko nga, yun ang hirap din dito sa bidding system. Of course, ano siya, uh, parang protection siya nga siya no, for government para yung, yung bibilin subject to bidding. Pero sana nga, kung may mga ganong uh, local manufacturing program at uh, dito sa mga like in the future, yung pag mag stockpiling na ang government, Sana for us, no, being in DTI, sana meron din tayong batas na that will uh, favor yung local manufacturers para nandito yung trabaho. Mm-hmm. Okay. Pero, 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 pero yun, ngayon, subject to bidding rules eh. So we have mm-hmm. to amend the law. Sige. Sir, just the last question on this topic. Uh, ngayon may, may overstock na of the, the items that PSDBM ordered and um, a lot of these uh, were not are not being purchased now by the agencies kasi masyado raw mataas yung price. So, does DTI have any ideas to um maybe solve this overstock and maybe minimize to wait to minimize the waste in supplies and loss of government? Yung overstock you mean on the government or the private sector? 
dun sa PSTBM, yung warehouses ng PSTBM too much na round, hindi nila mabenta sa agencies kasi masyado raw mahal. So what happens now to these supplies? Does DTI have any ideas how to manage the, the overstock? Mm. Ang, ang pinaka-rule pa rin dyan, syempre, pasakay na ilangan na yan ng health sector, ay talagang gagamitin yan. Uh, lalo na kung nabili na yan ng PSDPF. So that's, uh, as far as I know, uh, there is a continuing need for all these uh, medical devices anyway. So magagamit pa rin yan kasi nandyan pa rin yung pandemia at nandyan pa rin yung requirements ng healthcare sector. So uh, over time, kung may overstock ngayon, magagamit din yung supply na yun. Mm, pero like may mga supplies na may expiration date, Check, diba? Like masks can also be used up to beyond a certain At tagal date. naman ang expiration date naman ng mga ganyan. Uh, easily, easily two years. Hindi naman yan nag-expire as in like unlike food, di ba? Or, or maybe medicine. So ito naman, mas matagal lang shelf life yan. Okay. And um, last question naman about the economy and alert level system sector. Just to wrap up our, our interview, um, may sinabi si DILG Undersecretary Epi Mako Densing na um, possibly in a few weeks, or actually he said it like only a week of alert level 4 and baka mag alert level 3 ng Metro Manila. Um, and then I guess it's maybe some people are hopeful because of course Christmas season, they also want to move around. Um, what's the real deal? Uh, can we really expect alert level 3 within the month or within Christmas season? What do you think? Ah, what do I think? <laughs> sagot talaga dyan, what do we think about the pandemic? So, ang sagot dyan, talaga pag bumaba yung cases, we really go down into level 3. So, uh, hard to predict. Time. But, Not, oh, that's oh, the hard. only time we will go down. I'm sorry? That's the only time we will downgrade oh, to other oh. level 3. If the cases show any sign of abating, Not because we think it's a very long Oh, oh it, we'll have to see the numbers go down, the growth rates, the HCUR, the, yeah, yung mga yan, uh, we'll have to go down uh, so that it can give us confidence to move down to alert level 3. Mahirap mag, 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 ano, mag uh, predict or mag promise, we might raise false expectation. Uh, kaya ang, what we can really just do is really just encourage everyone to follow the health protocol and so that we have a role to play to bring down the numbers. At least hindi magsimula sa atin ang, ang paghahawa uh, at sa paligid natin. Uh, so we, by that, we will be helping uh, in bringing down the cases and we will be helping in reopening and therefore we will be helping in building uh, back more jobs, no? creating more jobs. All right. Thank you so much, Sek, Sekmon, for sharing your you. thoughts and uh, you. the information that you have from the task force. Uh, we will, of course, be closely monitoring how the task force manages the alert level system. Um, and for that, we will... I'm sorry. I lost you for 10 seconds. Yeah, uh, I also lost my... Uh, but anyway, thank you also and uh, uh, stay safe. Stay safe, everyone. Thank you. Yeah. Thanks for watching.